That's why I was to me that money. But if it is a donation from the state government, it is none of your money. Everybody will look at that they're giving our own. Let's say, uh, okay, if, if we are giving 10 million, it's okay, let's spend 5 million on the road. Let's share 5 million. That's how it works. Now, that is exactly how oil money works. It's not our effort. The money is not coming from us. So anybody is going to government. Most people, don't let me say everybody now, because I can't prove it. But so many people are going to government just to take their, their own share and run. If I'm a part of the government today, God forbid. <laughs> the first thing that is going to happen is that I'll just open the newspaper tomorrow. And I'll say congratulations from the city where my mates in primary school. And I don't, I don't know them. <laughs> but you there, Mr. How Simon is now in the position to funnel government money, to funnel oil money to us. So they want me to remember them, they put their names there. The next thing, my pastor will organize my VG for me. <laughs> well, I'm just using as an example. My pastor is a good person. <laughs> he organized my BG to pray for me. Before I go, he give me a list of some church members who need a corner, who need contracts. Then, the youths on my street, they will do a very giant portrait of me for my contribution to the community. I have not contributed nothing. <laughs> They are saying, find us something. Everybody that knew that I was living in my father's house before my appointment, and after two months I moved to Lucky, they're not going to ask questions. Even my father will not ask. I say, ah, my son, is this how bad big that I bought a house in uh, Lucky? Can we just be thanking God? God has changed our situation around in this house. God is so good. And then, my father can no longer live in uh, I lost my dad in several years, so I'm just, uh, it's just hypothetical. Uh, my father can no longer live in uh, a better, so I will now move in. My, with my parents, my mom and my dad, move them to Lekki. Let's say my wife was running a small shop in front of my father's house. She will now get a shop at uh, Shopper. She will go. She will, she will not get any shop again. She's not going to do any work again because it's not below me for my wife to be selling things. No. She will now be traveling to London, uh, Paris, on a regular basis. My children cannot go to. I have withdraw them. I have put them somewhere in America. Oh, the Fuji musicians. They won't allow me to rest. Mm. They also need their own share. Call our name, Obadiah. That is the society we are running. And I'm sure you will agree with me. This is I'm saying. That is how our money is spent. It was not like that when we were not driving our resources, our income from these resources. So the time has come for us to take seriously diversify the economy. And I will tell you the logic in it. By law, the natural resources, come, whatever money is made, goes to the coffers of government. By law. So if crude is $100 per barrel, when the income comes, you go to CBN, they go to Abuja, share it, and then it goes into the coffers of the states. But if we develop other sectors, Let's say agri is well developed. And when I say agri, I'm not talking about as primary producers. I'm talking about adding value. Pastor Rodario spoke about, you know, digging yam for your backyard, and then expect, I expect uh, importing pounded yam. If you have had value, if I go into farming, if I sell 20 tons of cocoa, the money comes to me. It doesn't go to the government. I only pay tax to the government. If all the oil is wasting in our state, if I go and set up a factory there and I'm doing color only juice, the income comes to me. It doesn't go to a federation account. 
So that's why it makes sense to diversify the economy, put the infrastructure in place so that this economy can grow, so that people can employ themselves. How many people can government employ? Government is already overblotted. You have uh, some governments are probably 50 special assistants. There are some that have about 50,000 special assistants. 50,000, I'm not lying. All the local government had special assistants. I just want to mention the names. Because of the oil money. When revenue now dropped, they now started sacking them. A lot of waste in the system. And now this is where I'm going. Where well, I've told you why we can't even fight corruption is a problem. Not because we don't know what corruption is. We know what corruption is. No matter what anybody says, we know what corruption is. But we have a system where everybody wants to be. It looks like I had an uncle retired as a as an elder master in the Air Force, and I don't I can't vouch for evil, but I can vouch with my life that I never stole a cobble. He occupied very senior positions in the Air Force. You know why they call him in my village? I won't tell you, but they say, ah, the man should have been a pastor now. Look at him. Everybody was busy making money. He was doing integrity. Up till today, they are busy. So the society is like, whenever you have you are in a position of government, help yourself. How can you say you are governor for four years, and then you are still living in the same house you are living in? To them, to Nigerians, it's like a sign of failure. Now, I'm not blaming Nigerians. Something has happened to us. Something has damaged us. We are not like this before. Something has damaged us. We used to demand accountability. I wish I could explain it. I know that right from the era of oil boom, that's when things started going down. But could it be that we were also ready to go down with those things before? And it only helped us? Because when my grandmother tells me the story of their own days, how they would put yams on the roadside, and for you to know the price, they would even put the, cow, the number of calories. If you say, that's the idea of price tag, by the way. The white man didn't invent price tag. So they would just put 10 calories there. And then the people going to come over, this is 10 calories, they would take it and drop the 10 calories. But today, if you try it, in those days. Where did you get this pencil from? To, today they say, oh, this guy is sharp. <laughs> so something has damaged us. Something has happened to us. That a lot of people have prayed for me. Ah, son, by the grace of God, you should get an appointment. I've got many appointments I've turned down. Because... I don't know. I don't know what, when people go to go and write it. I'm so encouraged by our story. I'm so encouraged. Even by Professor Shibago's story. I'm very encouraged. Because I've seen a lot of people going to go and by the time they come out, there's something else. They say, you don't understand. You don't understand. Why you give yourself them? It's a different thing. Why you go to go? It's a different thing. Because you think it's an opportunity to just fill your pocket. So I don't want to know what changes people do. That's why I don't want to go and try it. Let me just sit at home. Now I sleep, I snore properly. I'm not afraid of UFCC or ICPC. Now this is where I'm going. We well, have diagnosed the problems. And for every diagnosis, we also have our prescriptions. And prescriptions are usually based on diagnosis. You can't say somebody has high blood pressure and you're treating for malaria. So you discover that a lot of these, those who believe the problem is blood regard, I've also said what can I is the way forward. Those who say it's the constitution, they say well, let's write a new constitution. Those who say it's... So, let me complicate matters now. I believe that the problem is leadership. As well as several other millions of Nigerians know. We are being ruled by leaders who are either not competent, are not patriotic, or both incompetent and both unpatriotic. No country is going to change without good leadership. Leadership 
which she calls good governance. There's a lot for leadership. When we were talking about our street, I, I was 